Think Again TV is produced by Centre for Inquiry, Canada's premier venue for secular humanists, atheists, skeptics, and free thinkers. To be indoctrinated into a religion is part and parcel with um, tamping down and denying these natural tendencies that, that humans have in them to, to be skeptical and to ask questions and to try to find the truth. Everybody knows the Westboro Baptist Church. The Westboro Baptist Church is famous for their website, God Hates Fags, and for showing up at the funerals of gay people and of even United States soldiers. With Nathan Phelps, he is the son of Pastor Fred Phelps, who's sort of the patriarch of this uh, religious institution. He left the church when he was 18 years old and now speaks about his atheism. I wanted to ask him different sorts of questions than the ones he normally gets. If you've seen any interviews with him, there are some on YouTube, check them out. There are some in print, but most of them focus only on his background and growing up in that community. But that was really only 18 years of his life. And I wanted to explore more of that area of the entire rest of his life and the rest of his intellectual development. And what I found was that he had a lot of insightful things to say about many different topics. Um, I asked him about the nature of religion, the indoctrination of children, all sorts of things, uh, the nature of skepticism itself. I found repeatedly that he had very deep, insightful answers and showed the spirit of someone who was really committed to finding the truth. Yeah, I think the first question I'd like to ask is, I'm sure a lot of religious people watch this video or see you speak in a lot of different engagements, and their big concern would be that you came from a particularly fundamentalist background, a particularly hard background as well. And I guess why atheism? Why not a more moderate poli uh, position on religion? And that's a tough one for me to answer. Let me see if I can tackle this. I I heard what my father said, and that was always ringing in my head. Uh, and then I went out and, and heard other interpretations of the Bible. And... You know, like I said, I went to that counselor, and he and he gave his interpretation, and it actually started there for me that here was this guy who had a theological degree, and he's saying that this is a proper interpretation, and then I go somewhere else, and they have their interpretation, and got to the point where I realized that that really there are as many versions of Christianity as there are Christians, and that flies in the face of this notion of a uh, an objective morality mm -hmm. and if that's the case if everybody has a version of what they think God is or who they think God is then really there is no merit to the idea that there's someone out there who has a specific set of rules mm -hmm. and so I just got to the point where I thought this you know ultimately of course I I got to the point where I realized that there's there's no way to objectively uh, challenge us or test it or, or prove it. Mm -hmm. But that was the path I went down. I'm certainly glad to hear that as an answer as well, because I've always found that the idea of objective morality from God is is a bit of a non-starter, because you get religious positions that are so different in what they actually preach and what they, what they say. It's, it seems so difficult for me to accept that they're really carrying out a, a fully um, consistent position, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, and I think that that one of the uh, one of the paths they go down when you ask when you point something like this out, they say, well, well, um, like you point out the fact that the Bible, the actual content of the Bible, has changed. How can you say that it's been consistent? And they say, well, you know, God had His hand in that. There's always these kind of catch phrases that you know that God has the power to do anything. So. I, I kind of worked that against them, mm -hmm. I mean, not deliberately, but I thought, okay, so if God has the power to do this, then he surely has the power to not only present a specific objective morality, but to see to it that his people live by this specific, or, or at least acknowledge this as a people, this objective morality. 
he has that capacity. Well, he clearly has the capacity to do other things. Why not you say he has the capacity to do that? And since he doesn't, since that's not there, then it just points more to me as evidence that this is all coming from humans. Mm-hmm. So Now, in that same spirit of uh, coming out of humanity as well. Um, you know, I, I had spoken a couple of days ago privately about this problem that we all seem to have that the idea of morality, the idea of value seems so tied up with spirituality. It, and even using the word spirituality sort of conveys personal meaning, personal value. And we seem to be robbed of a language that can speak about the physical world, the uh, even the word word mundane really translates in Latin to of the world, mm. and so there seems to be in our in our collective psyche sort of a hatred of of the world and a, a want to elevate past it. Yes, I agree with that, and and I think also that that uh, you know I, for years I really had a trouble with with even defining some of these words because to me that's a lot of the problem is that. Like, what is spirituality? If someone could, could tell me what spirituality meant, then perhaps I could then turn around and point to them and say, then why do you need God for that? Because to me, spirituality was, is more about these emotions, these feelings we have of connectedness with others and that kind of thing. That doesn't speak to a God. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Then also I want to ask, many people would also sort of, I, I'm assuming, criticize you on the front of thinking that um, because uh, you came from like that sort of harsh background and had such a, an appalling nature of religion, I'm sure you've gotten people to, saying to you that you don't really know the nature of, of true religion, right? What do you say to those people? I say that, you, 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 okay, you define for me the nature of true religion. Tell me what it is and then explain to me how it is as far as the the challenges that I put up, any different than my father's religion, the challenges that I put up are that that the Bible doesn't bear out as a legitimate source of of um, moral guidance. It, 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 it you know people suggest that it is the inerrant word of a God. Mm-hmm. Okay, prove that to me. Mm-hmm. How do you prove it? Well, they'll argue that you know it's it's been unchanged for two thousand years. Well, that's not true. Right. When you look at the history and you look at the mm-hmm. facts, the Bible's changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Well, the message hasn't changed. That's not true. Well, you know, 40 authors over so many th- hundred years, and there is no discrepancy. Well, that's not true, right? right. So all of these things that they put up to, to argue mm-hmm. that, um, that their particular version of Christianity or whatever religion they are mm-hmm. is... Um, is demonstrated uh, comes back to the same issues that I have with with my father's religion. So, mm-hmm. I you know I, I actually talk about that uh, in my in my uh, speech that um, I don't accept that because yeah I mean growing up in that I'm very interested in finding out what the truth is. That's the effect that growing up in that had on me, not a hatred for religion or a hatred for God. Mm-hmm. I, I want to know what the truth is. And I'll and I will search high and low for, for to find the truth, mm-hmm. and that's it.